Creepy historical photos that will haunt your nightmares, part five. This photo shows a 15 foot great white shark floating in a tank of formaldehyde found in an abandoned Australian wildlife park. This first responder is helping to aid the Australian wildfires that were started at the beginning of 2020. They caused so much damage and destruction that they actually turned the entire Australian sky red. This shows a female patient undergoing treatment in 19th century Germany. They believe that the crucifixion pose would cure her mental illness. This appears to be an ordinary Chinese statue of Buddha. But when scientists placed it into a CT scanner, they found what appeared to be the mummy of a thousand-year-old Buddha monk. Okay, I don't know about y'all, but 2020 is not the year that we should be messing with mummies and seeing what's inside of them. This is why you should always look behind you when you are in the dark. There was a girl who lived with her little sister and her mom, and every night she'd always sit in front of the laptop doing her homework with her back facing the door. Almost every night her little sister would creep through the door and jump on her back in an attempt to scare her. This annoying act became normal for her until one night, it wasn't. She was on her laptop as usual and somebody jumped on her back. Now she was a little bit scared but she's been through this a thousand times so she quickly turned around to confront her sister but that was somebody else. This lady was standing right in her face and looking at her with that creepy smile. But the weird thing is, she couldn't see the lady, but she could feel someone looking at her. So she quickly jumped out of the bed and ran to her sister's room. She found her sister busy on the phone. Plus, their mom was out for the night, which means someone else was definitely in the room with her. She went to bed that night with this creepy feeling all over her. But the next morning, she woke up to the sound of her mom crying. So she ran downstairs and found out her little sister was missing. And there was a note on the bed that said, you're next. This is the haunting story of Jeff the Killer. Jeff was a young boy who moved into a new home with his family. One day, three teenage boys decided to attack Jeff and his brother, but Jeff managed to fight them off, leaving them in the streets with broken wrists and knife wounds. Unfortunately, after the incident, Jeff realized that he genuinely enjoyed inflicting pain and suffering on others. Later that night, Jeff's mother began to hear a strange noise coming from the bathroom of their house. It sounded like someone was crying. When she entered the room, she found Jeff carving a permanent smile into his cheeks, and she also realized that he had cut off his eyelids so he wouldn't have to sleep. Jeff's final words to his mother were, Mom, you lied. After which he murdered his entire family and disappeared into the night. He was never seen again, but legend has it, he's looking for his next victim. This has to be the most messed up unsolved disappearance story ever. Now, I have read my fair share of disappearance stories before, but this one just gets worse and worse until the end, which is absolutely terrible. This photo shows Susan and her husband Josh and their two kids. Susan and her husband Josh moved to Utah in order to get away from Josh's father, who was sexually obsessed with Susan and their two kids. This scumbag right here. On December 7, 2009, Josh's mother and sister went to their home. But they couldn't get into the house, so they called the police, and when the police came and entered the house, nobody was home. Then Josh came home and said he was camping with their two kids. And when they left the house, Susan was sleeping. Apparently, some of Susan's blood DNA was left in the house. But some of the other DNA didn't match Josh or his messed up dad. And in 2012, just three years later, Josh tried killing his two kids with a hatchet. And shortly after hurting them really bad with the hatchet, Josh blew up their house with him and the two kids inside of it. Here's a short, scary story. It was 1 a.m. and Calvin sat in his dark living room. The accident from earlier that evening just kept replaying over and over in his head. He was in his car and the light turned red, but he was in a hurry, so he just accelerated. All of a sudden, he saw an orange blur, and before he knew it, there was a body on top of his car that slid down onto the pavement beside him. A bicyclist rolled across his hood and fell out of sight. Horns started blazing, and he panicked, and he just drove off into the darkness. So now he just sat at home thinking, you idiot, how could you do that? And then he heard a knock on his door. It was the police. He started freaking out. He knew he couldn't afford a lawyer. He just began explaining, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, officer. But the police officer just stood there and said, are you Calvin? I'm sorry, but your son was in a hit and run accident. He died on impact. I'm sorry for your loss. Mysterious photos that can't be explained. This world-famous photo was taken in June 1989 in China after a bunch of protesters were shot and killed by police. The man in the photo stood in front of several military tanks not allowing them to move forward. The man was risking his life, and who he was as well as his whereabouts are still unknown today. And since then, this photo has become one of the most iconic images of human civil rights ever. 
This next photograph was released by the Pentagon just a few days ago. It shows a pilot flying through the sky with a mysterious object behind him. When zoomed in, that object appears to be a giant metal cube in the sky. The military dubbed it a UFO, or an unidentified flying object. Lots of people who have seen this photo claim that this is an alien spacecraft, but we don't know for sure. This is why you should never go downstairs alone. In 1984, an old widowed lady lived in a two-story house who was completely immobile and bound to a wheelchair. Ever since the mysterious death of her husband, she required a caretaker to come once a day to help her out with things. The most difficult thing the caretaker had to do was pick up the old woman and carry her up and down the stairs because she was paralyzed. A couple months later, police receive a phone call saying there has been a murder and the murderer has fled the scene. The officer walked in the door and noticed the caretaker's body was on the floor with her vocal cords ripped out. He noticed the old woman sitting in her wheelchair at the top of the stairs but immediately ruled her out because she was paralyzed. He looked around and saw a phone was on the TV stand but thought nothing of it so decided to check upstairs. He creaked open the bathroom door. Nothing. He creaked open the laundry door. Nothing. The last bedroom, he began to get really anxious and pulled out his weapon. He creaked open the old woman's door and said to himself, There's no phone up here. How did we receive the call? He ran back looking for the old woman, but found nothing but an empty wheelchair at the top of the stairs. It's what she finds in the kitchen that's really scary. In the early 90s, a young girl was sleeping in her mom's bed when she suddenly woke up for no reason. She looked at her door and she saw her very affectionate cat kind of meowing down the hall as if someone was coming up to pet it, but she was next to her mom and they were the only ones in the house. The girl shakes her mom awake and points to the cat just as a man is walking past the door and disappears into the room across the hall. Before the man could come back out and find them, they both jump out the window, run across the street and call the police. When the police arrived, the guy is nowhere to be found, but they do discover that the front door was unlocked, so that had to be the way he got in and out. But the mother swears up and down that she locked that door before she went to bed. A week later, the mother's cleaning their kitchen and she opens up the water heater closet where she finds this notebook that inside is their names and pictures of them in it, along with a pair of surgical gloves. Which means someone had snuck in at some point, was living in that closet spying on them, and then walking around their house at night. 